Hello and welcome to this session in which we will keep working with the general business tax credits and in this session I will cover several remaining business tax credit those are not all of them but I believe those are most common or stuff that you might see on the CPA exam or in your accounting course which are the low income housing credit disabled access credit small employer pension startup cost credit credit for employer provided child care and employer provided family and medical leave before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Starting with the low income housing credit. Just as the, as the name of the credit, low income housing, it means what? It's designed to encourage individual to provide property to low income tenants. The reason is Congress wants to deal with the homelessness issue. So what do, you, what do we do? We encourage people, if they have housing unit and they're willing to rent it for low income tenant, we'll give them a credit. The amount of the credit is designed on the qualified basis of the property, which is determined by the number of units rented to, to low income tenant. So the more low income tenant you rent to, the higher is your credit. And the credit is spread over 10 year period, but is subject to potential recapture. So if you have a building, it was initially designed to be rented for low income, then you changed your mind and you got some credit, you'll, the credit will be recaptured. Let's take a look at this example. Samantha spent 2.5 million to build a low income housing project that's completed June 1st of the current year. The entire project is rented to low income families. And the credit rate for property placed in service during June is 9.5. So Samantha can claim, because she rented 100% of the property, 2.5 million times 9.5, she can claim a credit of 237,500 in the current year. Now the rate might change, that's fine, just gonna have to show you how the credit works. Now if Samantha only rented 80% of those units to low income families rather than 100% will take 2.5 million times 80% times 9.5. So the credit will be 190. So the point is, if you rent it to the more units you rent, the higher is your credit. Now let's talk about the disabled access credit and the purpose of it is to encourage eligible small businesses to retrofit their existing facilities to make it accessible to disabled individuals. So you want to make it disabled to individuals, we are willing to help you as the government. The credit amount is equal to 50% of the eligible expenditure and you have to spend more than 250, but up to 10,250. Simply put, the maximum credit is 10,000 because let's assume you did spend 10,250 or more. What's going to happen is you're going to you're going to take 2,250 minus the 250. What's going to left be is 5,000. 5,000 times 50 percent. The maximum credit is 5,000. Now to qualify, a small business must have a gross income of 1 million or less during the previous year or have no more than 30 full-time employees. So this is designed for small businesses. The eligible expenditure would include what? Amount that are paid to incur certain changes to older facilities, such as installing ramps, widening door doorways, and adding raised marking on elevators control button. Those are the some typical expenditure. Also improvement to assist hearing or visually impaired employees or customers who interact with the business is also eligible. Now the credit amount is deducted from the tax basis of the asset. So if they gave you a credit, your basis will go down. Why? Because you are getting some sort of a credit. However, expenditure incurred in connection with any facilities that was placed in service after November 1990 are not eligible because at this point, the assumption is they should be already retrofit for disabled individual. Let's take a look at this example. Blue Company, an eligible small business, spent $8,000 on capital improvement to a building that was placed in service September 1988. The improvement made Blue's business more accessible to disabled individual, and as a result, it was qualifying eligible expenditure for this credit, the Disabled Access Credit Program. 
What is the amount of the credit? Well, we spent 8,000. The first 250 is not counted. Times 50%, the credit is 3,875. Notice we spent $8,000. Only the excess of 8,250 over 250, which is 8,000, qualify for the credit. The adjusted basis, so what happened is this. We spent 8,000. That's going to increase the basis. However, since we received 3875 of a credit, what's going to happen, the net increase in the basis is 4150 not 8000 because you did receive a credit. And it's very important to understand, if you receive a credit, you have to reduce your basis. It reduces your basis. Now let's talk about a small employer pension plan startup cost. Well, what is that for? To help small employers, small businesses start a pension plan for their employees. So eligible small businesses can claim a non-refundable credit for administrative expenses incurred in establishing and starting and maintaining a qualified retirement plan primarily for their non-highly compensated employees. If for the highly compensated, those could be the owners. You're not, you're not gonna get a credit for that. You're gonna get credit for helping your employees. Now, while expenses such as payroll, system changes, retirement-related education program, and consulting fees are typically deductible as ordinary and necessary business, the credit reduces the after-tax cost of establishing a qualified retirement plan. So yes, so you do have those various expenditure as part of administer, admin, having employees and administration costs, but starting a plan will give you, will reduce your after-tax cost because it's going to give you a credit. Why? Well, they want you to do what? Provide retirement plan for employees. Government wants to do everything to help you help your employees for retirement because otherwise they are the government problem. That's why, that's the purpose of it. So, small employer pension plan, um, credit is up to 50% of qualified startup cost. Now, of course, there are certain, limit certain limitation. To be eligible, an employer must have fewer than 100 employees who have earned at least 5,000 in compensation. So this is not designed for large companies. And the maximum credit is typically the lesser of $5,000 or $250 multiplied by the number of non-highly compensated employees. So the maximum is the lesser of these two, okay? However, the credit cannot be less than $500. The amount of the credit is deducted from the deduction of startup cost incurred. So let's assume you incurred uh, 6,000 in startup cost and you got a credit of 1,500. You deduct this, so your cost is 4,500. The credit can be claimed for qualifying cost incurred each of the follow each of the first three years following the tax year in which the retirement plan becomes effective. So you don't have to spend it only in one year. Let's take a look at an example. Maple Company decided to establish a qualified retirement plan for its non-highly compensated employees. As part of the process, it paid a consulting fee of $21,100 to a firm that provided educational seminar eligible employees and assisted the payroll department in making the necessary changes. So we just incur some cost as an administrative cost. And Maple has 65 non-highly compensated employees who are eligible to participate. Now. To help you offset the startup cost, Maple claim a credit of $5,000, which is the lesser of 5,000 or 250 times 65. What's 250? 250 is the number given by the government times the non-highly compensated employees, 16,500. So you're comparing 16,500 to 5,000. So, so you can, you, the credit is 5,000. Now, Maple, Maple deduction for these expenses is reduced by 16,500. You had 21,100. What's gonna happen is you're gonna reduce those deductions by 5,000, why? Because you got a credit. You cannot have the credit and also use the deduction. So you pay 21,200, that's fine. If you don't take the credit, we'll give you a deduction. Since you got a credit for that, what's left as a deduction is 16200 And this is basically not common sense, but something you have to know. If you got a credit for a deduction, you cannot get the credit and the deduction. If you got the credit, you have to remove the credit amount from the deduction. If you want to take the deduction, that's fine. Then you will take the full deduction. Let's take a look at the credit for employer-provided child care. From the name of it, your company is helping you with child care services. 
So employer can claim a credit for providing child care facilities to their employees during their normal working hours. For example, I work at a college and they do have child care facilities on campus. It's limited to $150,000 per year and the credit amount is 25% of the qualified child care expenses, 10% of the qualified child care and referral services. Deductible qualifying expenses must be reduced by the credit amount. That's always the case. And the basis of the property must be reduced by the credit amount as well. So if you get a credit, you have a property, you have a building, it must be reduced because you got a credit. And the credit might be subject to recapture if this child care facilities cease to be used for qualifying purposes within 10 years of being placed in service. Because what's the original purpose of this facility, child care facilities, is to service your employees. As an employer, you're providing this to your employees. Well, what happens if you change your mind and you want to open this child care facilities? Well, you're going to have a credit recapture. It means any credit you got in the past, you'll have to recapture it. Let's take a look at a quick example. During the year, Maple constructed a child care facilities for $400,000 to be used by its employees who have a preschool age children in need of child care services while their parent at work at this specific company. In addition, the company incurred salaries for child care workers. They need to house this place and other administrative costs of $100,000. So as a result, Maple's credit for employer provided child care services is 400 of the cost plus the administrative 500,000 multiplied by 25%, which is 125,000. What's going to happen is this. The basis of the facilities is reduced to 300,000. Why? Because we got, we got a credit, 25% credit. Remember, the building has a 400,000, gave us 25%, which is gave us 100,000. It means the, the basis of this building, remember the basis was 400,000, that's the basis, now we reduce it by 100,000. So when we sell it in the future, we're gonna have more gain. We're gonna have more gain. And Maple deduction for administrative costs, remember we paid $100,000 in salaries. Can we deduct 100,000? And the answer is no, we can only deduct 75. Why 75? Because we were given a credit for 25,000. We cannot have the credit and the deduction. So just again, this theme repeats itself again and again and again. Let's talk about the employer provided family and medical leave. From the name of it, yeah, well, company's employer could get a credit exceeds 50%. So if you happen to be very generous and you're paying more than 50% of the normal wages, that credit is increased by 0.25 percentage point for each point above 1%. So if you pay them 51% uh, of their salaries, well, your credit is increased by 0.25. For instance, if the employee pays 60% of their usual wages and salaries, then the credit becomes 15% which is because it's 12.5, the base, and you're getting 10, 10, 10 times 0.25, which will give you up to 15%. Now, bear in mind, the credit is subject to a cap of 25% of wages paid. They don't, you know, you can't go forever, which would be allowed if the employer paid 100% of the employer wages during the leave. So the maximum credit is 25%. The credit applies to a maximum of 12 weeks of leave per employee during any taxable year. So you can get this credit for 12 weeks of leave, no more than that. So to qualify for this credit, you need to implement a written policy that guarantee all full-time employees receive a minimum of two weeks of paid leave and medical leave per year. So you have to have a policy. Non-full-time employees should be provided, non-full-time employees, which is part-time employees, should be provided leave on a pro proportionate basis Wages paid as vacation leave, personal leave, or other form of medical or sick leave are not considered as family leave. They have to have, have to be a family leave in writing, okay? The credit applied to wages paid during taxable year 2018 through 2015. So if you're outside those years, you know, the, the credit doesn't apply or the, the rules might have changed or the Congress might decide to extend it. Just keep that in mind. What we talked about here applied to those Years. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional resources that's going to help you understand the concept, do better in your course, enrolled agent exam, CPA exam. Good luck. Study hard. It's worth it. And stay safe.